You know, when we become a connoisseur in the car community, okay, we find ourselves saying, what can I do to own the rarest of the rare? The blue eyes, white dragon of the car community. The first edition blast toys, if you will, okay? So what we do is we go out to the proper internet, the world wide web. We go online and see anything across the seas that sparks our interest because there's nothing in our tiny little country that we actually want. And we want something that nobody else could possibly own. We open up our calculator and we go 2020 minus 25 and then go search for 1995 JDM cars overseas to just see that we can bring home some beautiful cars to this patriotic slightly sick country okay by the way wash your hands I'm Alex Alex at FI on Instagram and today we're gonna be talking about the ultimate flex in the car community the wow do you see that guy with that car the Instagram formulae for popularity we're gonna be talking about you wanting to import a car And if you're just jumping into this, don't forget to subscribe so while you're stuck at home, you can keep up to date with all the bangers we're posting. And if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension, be sure to hit us up over at fitmentindustries.com where we're shipping pretty much every single day. We're still open. All right? It's just quiet and cold around here. There's not as many people as I would like. And if you guys don't want to pay the whole thing up front, we do have 0% financing through a firm so you can make monthly payments and it's not due in 30 days. There's a whole disclaimer that I have to tell you if I tell you anymore, but it allows you to get all your stuff now and not have to pay until, well, like May, June, summertime. What else do you want to know? The history of importing cars into the States isn't anything new and was something that started off with American soldiers that were stationed overseas during the Second World War. A little fondness grew onto the European vehicles that were over there at the time and there was little to no restriction on importing these vehicles. So servicemen would purchase these vehicles and import them to the States to be ready for them when they returned home. Because of the new market, these imported vehicles would be hella cheap and give a lot of these servicemen a better bang for buck on these cars versus their domestic counterparts parts that were available at the time. This donned the area of the dun, dun, dun. I had myself up. It was called the gray market. This continued to happen until regulations continued to grow in the mid 60s and into the 70s with the growing concern of the EPA. Those little fun suckers. All right. Manufacturers pressing governments to slow it down like Honda and Toyota because they didn't want people to import in anything because that just means that they couldn't make that much money. And even the DMV was trying to control the safety regulations on vehicles that were coming into the states because apparently that matters. Eventually, the Motor Vehicle Compliance Act would come into the fray and essentially crush the wild, wild west of importing vehicles and the process to really just slow it down because it was just getting so out of hand. And this was a big boy nerf when it comes down to importing cars with the amount of vehicles being imported from about 70,000 to under a thousand in about 10 years and that's a big old ouchie there brother that that's painful okay big old companies weren't too happy with their cars getting shipped without making a penny off of it because manufacturers don't like it when they don't make money and ultimately this led to the restrictions and led legislation passing companies like mercedes-benz and nissan's were getting hurt hard by these imports and they needed to find a way to stop people from importing cars themselves and instead getting them directly from the manufacturer by the way i just played warzone uh, second game got second place no big deal but it was happening to Japan as well. Japan in the early 90s were riding a pretty tall horse and had a good chunk of money to play with. People were wanting domestic vehicles like the good old Astro van, the Chevy Caprices, and even the GMC Typhoons in response to America's wanting Skylines, Toyotas, and a bunch of German cars. It was like a nice little tradesy that was happening in the back of the school bus. It was at this point that things started to get a little sideways though, because you could still import, but the registration, the restrictions, and the hoops to jump through just got a wee bit more difficult and just getting them processed was harder to do. Companies that still tried to import cars had incredibly difficult times doing so while still making enough money to actually even make it worth it. And it was still done, but it wasn't, it just it was like, it was like shooting film, you know? Like it's fun, but it's not gonna, it's not, it's not technically gonna get you much more than a digital photo but it's fine over time gray market vehicles would eventually die restrictions and regulations made it both not profitable and not fun for enthusiasts to really get a good deal out of any car out there around the world until about 1998 in 1998 the nhtsa or national highway traffic safety administration wow you just couldn't shorten that that one up a bit 
huh? The NHTSA passed lightened regulations that allowed easier importation of import vehicles over 25 years of age. This was a big deal. This was like the golden ticket for people like you and people like me, because at the end of the day, the only reason we can do what we do right now is because of this new regulation. This started to bring back companies that could import cars from the good old island of fun with a few less restrictions while still ensuring that the car met the minimum requirements to be on the road. Not much got important in the beginning days of this new regulation because not many people knew about it, but after a few years, things truly began to sparkle. Motorex came bursting onto the scene like an over-energetic 12-year-old that had his first Red Bull and just decided that he wanted to begin slanging cars left and right. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, that was predominantly Nissan Skylines, and that is an entirely this is an entirely different video, but we should probably talk about it at some time. Motorex, you guys know Motorex? You know, the company imported R34s, lots of drugs, partying, the whole nine yards. Owner wasn't that uh, cease and desist, lawsuits, jail cars getting stolen. Yeah, it's a different video. Even though a few companies left a bad taste in the mouths of a lot of enthusiasts, the NHTSA regulation truly began to reopen the doors to import cars. And that's when you fast forward to today. And the 25 year old rule now allows some absolutely bangers of cars to come to this beautiful red, white, blue country. Okay. But we're not here to talk about the history of importing cars. You want that? Go grab that history book that you've never picked up, okay? In sociology or whatever the hell it's called these days. We're here to talk about you wanting to import a car, okay? Well, set down your favorite R34 GTR wallpaper and grab that credit score because we're about to talk what it's like to actually import a car. I feel like I'm making so much noise with my windbreaker on. Ow! Ow! My, my weenus. Importing a car is kind of like buying a garage build. Starts off fantastic. You're stoked. We're stoked. I'm stoked. You're stoked. It's a good time. It's kind of like dating someone that just seems too perfect, okay? And then over time, you realize why nobody was dating him or her. And you realize also why not many people actually do it. Importing a car has some fantastic benefits. You have access to a platform that is rare, unique, and unlike pretty much anything else that's in the United States for the most part. And on top of that, a lot of aftermarket overseas vehicles feature a more high performance, highly tuned variant of what the United States received during the same time. And it is pretty banging. But there are a few caveats, if you will, to doing something like this. Because importing a car that's rare is, it's importing a car that's rare. You have less access to parts and support communities and affordable pieces and things like that. And sure, there are opportunities that allow you to swap parts from another car in case your imported one breaks, but it requires a little bit more finesse and a more educated automotive enthusiast to find their way around actually keeping a car like that alive. If you've never MacGyvered a car before, it's probably not the best idea to jump into buying an imported car because you'll need to be able to sometimes make your own parts, find workarounds from OEM parts, and be patient as you wait for certain things to come from overseas, like from Japan or from Europe, if you can even find them. When it comes to modifying these cars, it's still possible to make some truly insane and unique cars, and they are a blast to drive. The 1990s JDM cars have massive potential. You can see it in the RX-7s and the Skylines and the 3000 GTs that have come overseas, but you can also see it with the European cars like AMGs and M-Series vehicles that can also be imported. Even the Evo 3 is a car that's just a banger to pick up right now, and you can do it without necessarily breaking the bank initially. You still have some insane wheel, tire, and suspension options on a lot of these cars, with most people end up going to the OGs, like work wheels, Volk, Gram Lights, SSR, Wed Sports, which you can get at fitmentindustries.com, just to keep that JDM car period correct. Period correct is a huge thing on imported cars, which is the most underrated thing in the automotive scene right now, at least in my eyes. Essentially, it just means that if the car was built in 94, having modifications and wheels associated with that time frame of modifying that car back as if it was in 1994, 1995. If you do that, you're definitely playing the car game on legendary mode though, because parts are more difficult to come by and even more expensive to maintain. But it does, it does as they would say, Slap. 
I don't even know what that means. If I were to do that, I don't know what you would imagine. Anyway, anyway, importing a car has quite a few hoops to jump through. You can do it yourself if you want, but it's best to find a broker that's done it a time or two because if you mess it up, you'll be owed a large chunk of change, patience, and probably a car. Companies like Japanese Classics have founded a pretty killer business around importing cars and does a fantastic job with ensuring the car that you see on the import block over across the way is the one that you end up buying without too many surprises. Now, maybe the plug will get me a discount on our R33 GTR because I want one really bad and for some reason they just went up to $50,000 in price. Not entirely sure how that happens. There's lots of importing car companies that do very similar jobs. Importing a car is for someone that has patience, time, and a little bit of change that knows what they want and how they want it and why, okay? There are so many potentials out there that if you email an import company and you ask them to find you a car, they'll probably just want to toss you off a hillside. And I didn't say cliff or mountain because Wisconsin doesn't have either of those. Now, in terms of importing cars also comes with its fair share of challenges, such as limited parts, limited communities, more expensive support, and overall, all of that can be a doozy. If you get an accident, finding replacement parts is relatively going to be uh, a, a bad time. All right. However, if you're up for the fight and you want to have that cool Laurel or that R32 GTR, that R33, or you want to have something neat, you want to have a, a, a Japanese van for some reason, and you're willing to put in the occasional work to keep it up and make sure that nothing breaks on it and you can MacGyver some stuff, it is a fun time. So have you imported a car before or have dreams of doing so? Let us know below. And if you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension for your newly acquired import car or just your summer build that's coming up, be sure to hit us up over at fitmentindustries.com where we have everything you need from work wheels or otherwise. And of course we have 0% for a firm. So if you want to get stuff, but you don't want to pay on it right away, you can actually do so. Then your first payment's like in 30 days or something like that. It's a new thing. We're very excited about it. I hope you're excited about it because guess what? Apparently when you can't go outside, it's a little bit difficult. It's a little scary to decide what you're going to do with your car build. Let me tell you what you're going to do with your car build. You're going to finish it because this is the only time that you're actually going to work on it. You know it. I know it. If you're stuck at home and you're still not working, on your car, I got bad news for you, pal. It ain't never getting done. So I'm gonna be your motivational speaker for the next two, three weeks to make sure that that stuff gets done. Anyway, I'm Alice from Fitment Industries and we will see you later. Peace.